if it's more important than ever, we remember that fat phobia is rooted in misogyny and racism. So I have seen some uh, fat jokes circulating here about Trump. And while I'm all for you mocking him, not like that, right? Let's not weaponize someone's weight or their looks against them because all we are doing by doing that is continuing to support the exact systems and societal standards that have allowed him to win. Crazy stance. A very unique stance. Don't make fun of Donald Trump's weight, even though, if I'm being honest, regardless of your political stance on Donald Trump or Joe Biden or Kamala Harris, regardless of any of that, we cannot deny the simple fact that Trump does have those childbearing hips. I mean, there have been many of times I've gone on Google to authenticate the fact that this man is just appropriately shaped in many ways that many, many women would find optimal. Not many men. Not many men would find it optimal. Now, maybe the men... Uh, that would maybe uh, be on the different side of things, right? Uh, homosexually oriented men, men that are willing to be pegged and things such and so forth, which is fine if you're a man and you do want to be pegged. It's like nothing wrong with that. Um, a little, you know, homosexual in my opinion. But if you wanted to do that, I have no problem with that. But uh, Donald Trump most definitely had them childbearing hips. And I think he is actually a little bit overweight. If I'm it, right, am I wrong? I, I'm pretty sure he lied about his height too. I think he says he's like six foot four. But I'm pretty sure everybody authenticated that he's not six foot four. He's just a very deeply insecure man, if I'm being honest with you. But. I think it's totally fine to make fun of anybody uh, when it comes to physical looks. Now, granted, some things are going to be a little bit more appropriate to make fun of than other things. Like, for instance, if you see somebody on the beach and they're missing a leg, um, maybe don't walk up to them and go, hey, get the fuck out of here. We don't like you, you one-legged motherfucker. We don't like the way you look. That, that leg looks weird, too. We don't like that. Get off the beach. We got children around. It's real. It's, it's ugly. It doesn't look good. Right now, if, if the leg was just recently bitten off by a shark, you might be saying something different. Obviously, if you said that to somebody that just got recently a leg bitten off, um, probably wrong. But uh, depending on the person you're talking to and how you're saying it, some things are a little bit more valid to talk about than others. And sometimes people bring it up in conversation. So if I'm talking to somebody, I won't usually say anything to them. But if there's a comment or if there's a backhanded comment um, towards me or something like that, I'm totally willing to get into the mud and talk to you disrespectfully, right? Like I've had many of people tell me, David, you look like a pedo because of the mustache. Well, how can I be a pedo when your mom was literally slobbing on my shit last night? I had to literally dislocate her jaw in order to appropriately fit my big, meaty, masculine, musty meat in her mouth. I mean, how can I be what you're claiming when me and your mom have such an exotic relationship? I mean, I, it's, it's actually insane. So I'm totally willing to get down to the mud. And I totally think that if you're talking about somebody's weight, it's valid, dude. Now, these people got to grow up. Um, we live in a beautiful time to be alive, and they get offended by literally everything under the sun. So uh, if you're offended that somebody said Donald Trump is fat, what are you fucking talking about, bro? Get, 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 get your shit together, okay? Jesus Christ, man. Um, by the way, if I can make fun of Donald Trump's weight, I can also make fun of Kamala Harris's silk press. So let's remember... That. Oh yeah, why was that? Why is that rooted in racism? I, I completely forgot that she said that it was rooted in racism and misogyny. Can you imagine somebody saying Trump is overweight and going, are you misogynistic? <laughs> what? What are you talking about? Are you racist? A, a, a little bit? No, come on. Only on Tuesdays, right? Tuesdays and Wednesdays? Fat phobia is an obsession with women's bodies. But we're talking about Donald Trump's body, right? I guess if you're saying like Donald Trump got them childbearing hips, but it's not ne there's nothing necessarily like misogynistic about that. I don't really hate that many women. And them adhering to certain standards. And we are upset because a government- I, I feel like these people lose the plot so drastically. And then when they start talking in these particular ways, it's so incredibly nuanced that most of these people have no idea. Like most normal people, like normies, uh, don't really understand what you're talking about and even me who's been ingrained within this like fat acceptance movement for so long at least a year and some change at this point um it's even hard for me to sometimes rationalize how they're how they're putting two and two together uh i can kind of understand what they're saying in the sense that like most women in general are um pri prioritized based off their body size therefore if you're talking about weight which seems to be the number one thing that affects most women based off physical standards and that is obviously going to be something that most women find very very uh, de de dehumanizing and things like that if you call them fat. Uh, I just think that these people take it too far because like, for instance, if you're over here talking about uh, Donald Trump being overweight, big, ginormous, childbearing hips, right? And you're sitting here talking about some that's, you know, um, misogynistic and racist. Most people are going to look at you sideways and even they're not even going to listen to you 
explain that out because you lost the plot so drastically like the way you're connecting stuff out is so incredibly weird that most people will never be able to understand it is a time i just think these people have to find new language <laughs> i really do because the way they talk about stuff is so incredibly crazy hunting or will likely be now governing women's bodies diet culture has been doing uh, let's just go back a little bit Hold them on. adhering to certain standards and we are upset because a government is attempting or will likely be now governing women's bodies diet culture has been doing that for a very long time i don't know if the if diet culture has had the government doing that to women's bodies i don't know like again it's just so weird like it's just such a such a weird thing to say also aren't you like australian like isn't that what you are isn't that it a am i wrong are you not australian babe like let's like go surfing and stuff and like maybe after we can go to the pond and we can like i don't know like see a whole bunch of kangaroos and maybe we can have sex next to the Tasmanian devils and things like that, babe. I don't know. I don't know, dude. It's just so weird when I hear people from outside the United States talk about uh, United States politics so heavily. Like, don't you guys have your own stuff? Like, you know, go go do your own thing. I, you guys have got enough stuff to worry about with the whole, like, you know, koalas falling out of trees and, you know, uh, kangaroo pouches and mobile homes that you're living in. I don't, I don't know exactly how it works over there. I don't know. And yes, it's not quite the same, but it's not the same at all, but also it comes from the same place. What is the place though? Misogyny and racism, I guess, uh, not systemically or maybe systemically. How does this work? And similarly, racism, How? the obsession with thinness is also an obsession with the purity of whiteness. How? What? Where? How are you getting? Where are you going with this? How did you get here? Like, wh where? Where? What? What type of articles have you been reading? Who have you been listening to? Where you connected the dots in this particular way? Uh, the obsession with thinness is the obsession with whiteness. So you're telling me if a black guy who was like 350 decided to lose weight, he's trying to become more white? What are you crazy? Are you actually retarded? What are you talking about? That's that's <laughs> craziness, bro. And you know what? You're actively demoralizing people who actually want to lose weight because if people are connecting racism, therefore being, and by the way, there's not necessarily wrong about being white. So like your implication that being white is bad is crazy. So there's that, but there's nothing inherently white about losing weight. Like it, it's, it's so crazy. It's like when people say, oh, you know, when you go to the gym, that's an, that's an inherently a uh, Republican view or a far right view to go to the gym. What are you crazy? There's nothing wrong. Like it's not, <laughs> there's nothing left or right about going to the gym. I understand that maybe like the right might think that they have a monopoly on going to the gym, but no, it's not, it's not the case. Everybody should feel like going to the gym is a neutral thing. Um, you know, we should all be proud to lose weight. It's not, there's nothing inherently about it that makes it white or black. That's crazy. I don't even know where you even got that from. Um, I would love to see some nuance to this topic. Maybe she, she talks about it a little bit. I'm, I'm willing to listen um, to see why thinness is associated with be, an obsession with being white. I have no idea where that came from, but go ahead. I thought we were talking about women's bodies, but go ahead. With thinness is also an obsession with the purity of whiteness. So let's just be careful. Can you please go over that? Like you can't just leave that there and expect people to just understand what you're saying. How? How does that happen exactly? The obsession with whiteness? Does anybody even really even care about the obsession with whiteness anymore? I remember I was having a conversation with somebody recently and they were like, how do you feel about like white people becoming the minority in the next hundred years? I don't care, bro. Like what are you fucking talking about, bro? I, I, so many people find so much value in their skin color. And I don't really, I've never really cared. It's, it's never really been a, a paramount issue for me. Um, I understand what you're saying, like in the sense of sure, white people are gonna probably be bred out of existence in the sense of like, it, the more darker complexions will become, you know, more diverse because there's more dark people on the planet compared to white people and the, I guess, but why does that matter? Like, you know, why do you care so much about that? That's so weird to me. Um, why does it matter if you're more white than somebody else? <laughs> like, I just never understood it, dude. It just doesn't make any sense to me, man. With how we choose to demonize this person. No, no examples, man. I, I just love it. I just love saying... If you're making fun of Donald Trump, then you're misogynistic and you're racist and you also wish to pursue purity of whiteness, but no examples, no, hey, this is the reason why. There's no, there's nothing there. There's no nuance at all. I just love it. 
when these people say shit like that and don't have any explanations. It's my favorite because I'm just sitting here pondering this pure stupidity, the pure retardedness of that individual because they somehow managed to put that video together, edit it out, and then watch it back probably because it's only like a minute and then see, mm, you know, that's not too bad. That was a pretty good video actually. I think everything I just said in that was pretty accurate. That's beautiful. I mean, hey, we, li we really, in, in modern world, right? That person just made that video. Now, I would be struggling to think about how that person even navigated to the, the home screen of TikTok and managed to click on the button to upload the video and compile a video together and put, and then upload it, generate a title and possibly a thumbnail. Do you put thumbnails on TikTok? I'm not sure. And then upload that to YouTube. I mean, that's inspirational. That person right there with like the, the most smooth brain you ever seen in your life was able to navigate and do all that stuff. <laughs> Anything is possible at that point, dude. Two thumbs up to that person, dude. Stupidity personified, but they're still able to do stuff. Anger the thins again today, I guess. True. Let's anger the thins. Hold on. Let me see the... Let this me see person. it. Let's I love how the oversized trend proves it's not the extra fabric that makes plus size clothing more expensive. It's then straight sizes. Anger the thins again today, I guess. Usually, um, just for some context here. When big retailers or whoever is making these products, um, like clothing, for instance, what they'll tend to do is like if they need to make bigger clothing, what they'll do is they'll take the average cost across the board. So like let's say, for instance, a small shirt cost, hypothetically, I don't know, like I don't know how much fucking clothes cost to make. I probably over like Indonesia or like Vietnam or some shit. Let's just say hypothetically, it's like a dollar, like one shirt, one small shirt is like a dollar. But let's say, for instance, a medium shirt is like two dollars and then a large shirt is like four dollars. They'll they'll compile all those shirts together together and they'll get the median value of like altogether this should be roughly three dollars even though the the larger shirt costs more fabric and put together and stuff like that um they'll just average it all out so everybody basically is paying the same amount of money most people don't complain about it because like why the fuck would you complain about it, it doesn't fucking matter anyway but um that's usually how they do it they just take the averages across the board and they just um put that price tag on it yes the amount of fabric being used to produce clothing be it a 60 that is a crazy size pants, bro. Who, my God, look at the size. The size, bro. That's some Brendan Fraser from the whale type shit, dude. I'm surprised that people at this size can even put on jeans at this point. That's crazy as fuck. But go off, man. Go ahead. I'm, I'm willing to listen. The inch waist pant or a 24 inch waist pant doesn't actually play a significant role in the cost of production. If anything, offering plus sizes makes it easier for me to provide you guys with clothing. Hmm. When it comes to dyeing and washing fabric, there is a minimum amount of weight that needs to be put in the machines for them to even start it, for them to even start production. Meaning, if I offer plus sizes, I am able to meet these minimums. I understand what he's saying. He's saying that basically he needs to have a certain amount in order for. It, it, he needs to have a certain amount of product even for a machine to work or sell in general. But here's the thing. When you can make five plus size pants like these or you can make 20 regular size pants, why would you make the plus size pants? So I understand what he's saying, but it's also like I'm pretty sure he's just pandering here. Now, I don't understand the deep intricacies of creating clothes and things like that. I would have to see this over to this gentleman if he does make clothes. I mean, granted, they don't look very good to me, but I mean, the pants he's wearing at least. But I would seed it over. If he has experience over me, then that's fine. But I see what he's saying, but it's also like, it's not so much about what he's saying, it's about what he's not saying. So if he's saying like, oh yeah, it, it makes it easier for me to throw these into the machine and it, you know the weight is equal. Well, like, if one pair of pants here is equal to like three pairs of normal pants, then wouldn't it be better to sell the three pairs of normal pants since you're getting more out of it compared to the one giant pair of one pants? I don't know. So why am I going to penalize my customers for purchasing a plus size? It's not so much about like, I feel like a lot of these people don't understand even like I've seen this so often. It's not so much about like having the clothes, but more or less about the clothes selling. So like if you have them on the rack and they're there and people come in and they want to buy these clothes, that's fine. But if you have them on the rack and they don't sell and they're just perpetually sitting on the rack over like months and months and months and maybe eventually somebody comes in. But the, the, the regular standard size clothes, which sell consistently, even though I know a lot of people will say, David, um, you know, these are these are regular size clothes, but we have a larger plus size community here in America compared to regular size people. I understand that. But the regular the regular size people are buying clothes more frequently. OK, like how many you know, how many women that I know, because I don't know men that buy clothes. Uh, most men I know don't even wear deodorant or wash their butthole. That should tell you the sheer caliber of people I hang around. But anyway, um, I know a lot of women that spend a lot of time shopping. You know, I've heard this saying before, bitches be buying shit. I don't know, bro. Look, I don't like it. I don't like going shopping. It's one of my least favorite things whenever I date women. I don't date men, by the way. I don't know why I preference it like that, but I don't date men. I don't. I'm not gay. Never been gay. Never will be gay. But 
when I've dated women before, one of the worst things I've ever done, uh, one of the worst things I, I hate is going to shop, going to shop for things. Um, because I'm just standing there holding stuff and, you know, like, oh, do you think this looks cute? What do you think this makeup palette will look good? Do you think these panties will look cute? Um, what do you think about sports bras as opposed to these bras? I don't know anything, okay? I don't care. Any of this stuff, none of this is valuable to me. I hate, I hate being here right now. I'm just waiting for you to go, okay, let's go. And then, you know, at the register, I probably have to pay for it. But the, the point I'm making is like, I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. I think most guys probably don't like shopping in general. Um, and if they do, they probably are gay or they're shopping for things that that are probably really, really expensive, like computer parts or like giant fucking big screen TVs or, um, I don't know, gamer chairs that don't do anything, but you know, like you push a button and you lean all the way back in them or something like that. Like that's usually where most guys are going. You know, guys are not buying lamps. Guys are not buying those like, you know, uh, the strip lights, uh, across their thing with the, with the little vines coming down off of them. Um, and guys are not buying deodorant, you know, women buy deodorant for men. I know guys that literally, if they didn't have a mom, they would not have deodorant. I'm not even joking about that. So, it, it, you know, I understand. Um, I don't even know what the fuck we're talking about anymore. I don't, I just, I don't even know what the fuck we're talking about. And they're the ones that are helping me meet those minimums. I talk about this all the time. And he's probably like a small, a small person when it comes to like creating clothes, right? But anyway, go ahead. That the cost. I, I also love that, um, you know, Mighty Murph and Fash found one example of somebody that said we like making plus size clothes, and somehow this is going to like completely demolish all the fat phobes. Like this is the information that she's been waiting for. Hallelujah! Finally, somebody that agrees with her. Even though literally the last like twenty videos she's made, she's been arguing with people, and literally had people telling her like, no, it's pretty hard to make plus size clothing. Like they don't sell, and then when they do sell, it's like few and far between. But yeah, this one guy that says like, yeah, we we make plus size clothing, and it's fine. That's great. I'm so happy that you have your one example. Of quote unquote extra fabric, especially when you're talking about. Yeah, but you know what? If you ever look back at my older videos or whatever, any of the videos that I've done, I never really cared about the fact that there's more or less fabric. And I've already probably, I've already said the nuance on that, which is that they divide, they have all the clothes. Like what I said at the very beginning, I have all the clothes and they just put the average across the board. Big box stores. It's not so much, it's not so much about that. It's more so about like, will the clothes be on the rack? How long will they be on the rack? And will they sell? That's more, that's more of the speed, like supply and demand. Is really one, not that much extra fabric. True. People think that we're talking about like loads and loads of extra fabric. It's really not that much fabric. It's, it's not, it depends on what you mean by not that much. Like I'm sure that the, okay, people got to understand this, right? The fabric cost is not an issue in the sense of like, there's plenty of fabric. Like I'm sure they can, you know, if, if one pants is equal to two regular pants, which I wouldn't be surprised if that size, whatever size that was that we just saw was probably double or triple the amount of fabric that you would need for a regular pair of pants. I, I, whatever I, these big, these big companies don't give a fuck, right? They, they really don't. And if you buy things in bulk anyway, it shouldn't matter. But, um, I don't think anybody's really said this. Like if somebody's complaining that there's too much fabric, therefore you should up the price well they do up the price it's just averaged across the board you're just not seeing it directly um but i'm pretty sure nobody that knows anything about this shit at all anybody that's worth their salt nobody would ever bring this up as an issue and i just like hate it so bad because like i see these people that they'll look for like a red herring or they'll look for one example to try to defend their point um but nobody's actually arguing this shit like nobody gives a fuck that there's more or less fabric and that would up the price therefore you should pay more money on that or whatever nobody cares about that anybody that knows any of their shit doesn't care about that well what we are more concerned about is you guys complain that there's nothing in the sh in the stores when you guys don't go in the stores to buy the stuff i don't give a fuck that, it, that there is more or less fabric that's besides the point when you actually know like how to cut a pattern correctly two when you are a are you was the implication that like these big box stores don't know how to do that <laughs> are you implying that it's like easy to make clothes for plus size people are you crazy no that's insane bro it is very difficult to make plus size clothing even for like r d like research and development it's very difficult to like put clothing patterns together for plus size people it's not as simple as like for me or you like when i have clothes my pants roughly fit any dude that is you know my size like it's these these pants would fit another guy that's a 30 30 right so when you say like oh it's it's you know if you know how to cut clothes it's not as simple as cutting clothes right like you guys are all shaped differently if a guy was roughly my height and roughly my weight he would fit into my clothes easily but if somebody was however how much you weigh which i think she said she was around 350 pounds or something like that i don't know let's say you were 350 pounds right uh somebody at 350 pounds 
that's you compared to somebody else that's 350 pounds, um, the odds are they're not going to fit the same way. They're not going to have the same clothes. They're not going to be able to find the same type of stuff. Maybe they hold their weight more in the upper body. Maybe they hold their weight more in the lower body. Maybe they hold their weight more in the mid body. Like it, there are different ways that people hold the weight. Um, maybe if you're, if you're big backed or, you know, big thigh, it's going to be difficult to find clothes across the board that are going to be able to like appropriately fit people. So it's very difficult to create a, a, a pants, pants that are going to fit you, Sarah, Jessica, and Joseph. Like this is crazy. You guys are all like 350, but Joseph, hold his weight in his back you hold your weight in your thighs it's difficult man it's hard so the pants ain't gonna fit a big box store you're paying very little per like yards of fabric true and three you just heard this person say like that i don't care about your anecdotal evidence man I, I i really it's like it's it's awesome that you found an example but with all due respect it doesn't matter it's, it's completely irrelevant i don't give a fuck about what that one guy said that proves your point like how many hours of footage do you have to look through to find one guy that that basically agreed with you that's not where the cost actually comes from they go on to say that the actual cost is like overhead and production costs. It has very little to do with the actual materials. Cool. So there you go. What it's, do you mean there you go? It's not because we all just need extra fabric. It's not. No, no. I, if anybody said that, they were probably just dumb people. Nobody gives up. Okay. Anybody that knows anything about this shit... Uh, it doesn't give a fuck about the extra fabric, like I said. It's more about, like, will it sell? If I put it on the shelves, will it sell? You can have a great product, but if the product is not marketed well or the product is uh, marketed towards a particular demographic of people that just don't buy those stuff, then what's the point? Like, for instance, everybody likes PS5s, right? PS5s are great. I have a PS5. Can you see it back there? It's a PS5. People like PS5s. Would you sell your PS5 to, like, a whole bunch of people that were, like, living in a village in Vietnam? Probably not. They're probably not going to buy it from there, right? They're probably not. So, like, it's the same thing there. Why would you put PS5s on a shelf um, for, for people that can't even afford to buy, like, regular household needs? You know what I'm saying? No. You market it to the place that you know they're going to sell. So you market it to America. You market it to maybe some parts of China, depending on the, you know, the presence of the CCP. Uh, maybe you market it to, like, some, we some European countries and things such and so forth, like, where people have expendable money. You don't market to people that don't have money. Same thing here. Like, why am I putting my clothes out for people that just don't come into the shop and buy them? It's just not, it's just not practical. I want to be clear that my condemnation of plus size bodies in advertising is not a criticism of having plus size bodies in advertising. By that I, I really fucking hate this person because they talk so condescendingly and they're always smiling through everything they say. And it's almost kind of like, I know that they're trying to like prove a point and they're trying to make it seem like, oh, I'm saying something so real. But most of the shit this person says is completely hogwash. And I hate the way they talk about shit. I mean, I think that it's generally good when there are fat bodies in advertising and in media in general. But what I'm saying is bad is when we conflate that with actual fat liberation. Like a plus size line at Abercrombie and Fitch is not not social progress, but it's also not something that is necessarily advocating for the rights of fat people. So I'm guessing I'm hearing like, we want fat liberation and companies are doing things that could be interpreted as fat liberation, but they're not going far enough. And because of that, I'm not going to count it as fat liberation. Sure. I don't know what you want exactly, though. Like, what do you, you want, like, people to go to the government and, like, try to pass a law or some type of shit that the government can, like, implement to respect fat people across the board? Like, what exactly do you want? Like, I, I would expect that if a, if a company is making plus-size clothing and they're doing it successfully and they're advocating for fat people, I would think that, sure, it might not be, like, everything, but at least it's something, right? At least it's, like, you know, if, if you have 0% and something goes up by 5%, would you argue that that 5% is like doing nothing at all? Like I would love the more, I would love 5% over nothing any day of the week. But I kind of understand what she's saying, but it's just kind of like, so I don't give a fuck what you say. Like at least it's helping you guys, right? This is why you can't appease these people. Like these people will always be upset regardless of what they're talking about. And that's what I mean when I talk about like fat liberation policies. Like I, <laughs> I think it is good and it is social progress when there are plus size lines that are what do you mean by policies like what are you talking about like what, what you, you want your state senator to like put put shit forward to like laws and things like that to like advocate for fat people in what way like what, what do you mean by policies like maybe she means like store policies like <laughs> i don't know man whatever like i think it is good and it is social progress when there are plus size lines that are expanded to be more accessible to people cool. and also i want to see more policies that are actually tackling things like medical discrimination and so you are talking okay policies are just crazy so she is talking about like state policies or government policy 
what kind of policy? Like, what are you exactly asking for? And I hate this shit. I hate this so much when people like, they'll just say statements and they don't, they don't add anything to it. Like there's no nuance. There's no example. Like I need an example. I need you to tell me like, what do you mean by that? Like, what do you mean? Like you don't want, you don't want medical discrimination. Can you tell me what you mean? Like, what does that mean? Give me an example. When you say medical discrimination, you talk about like people that go into hospitals and like maybe the elevators out. So they have to walk up a flight of stairs. You're talking about like people that go to the doctor and the doctor tells them that being fat is not good. Is that what you're talking about? Medical discrimination? Are you talking about like, Oh, Hey, I need the surgery, but we can't operate on you. Cause literally if we do, you literally might die. If we put it, if we put you under anesthesia, therefore we can't perform the surgery you're talking about that as medical like i need an example i need you to like go into that i need i need something because these people just leave it there and i'm just like wondering like what the fuck and i understand why they don't because they know if they preference it preface sorry they preface it right and they give an example what tends to happen is people look at those examples and they go what the fuck are you serious are you crazy and this is this is the example you chose this is so crazy right because these people will use things like oh like you know elevator access needs to be on everything rooms to be needs to be wider and uh you know doctors need to stop talking about weight and they'll look at the, the regular people will hear that and go what are you crazy like you have a problem with your weight you don't want a doctor to tell you about that like what do you say like most people see that and they go this is ridiculous so they have to be very ambiguous they have to make sure that whatever they're talking about is like very illusionistic so that way when Whenever you hear it, you go, oh yeah, yeah that makes sense. But uh, you know, if your brain, if your if your brain isn't working off of like room temperature IQ, you should be able to understand this person is just like basically glazing you down with nonsense information that actually has no detail at all. And anti-fat policies in the workplace. And those are things that having an activist framework enables us to fight for. I disagree. I think you guys like have been advocating for this shit for so long. And most of the shit you guys advocate for is just impractical baseline. So uh, it would be cool if you could advocate for things for like more elevator access. Like I get that. That makes sense, right? Uh, maybe you could advocate for things like more accessibility options when you go into supermarkets. But a lot of that stuff would be determined based off of the, the, the private entity that owns that stuff. So you would have to advocate for them. So like I, I understand like even me, like here I am giving you reasons or things that you can say that would be like statewide run or whatever the fuck that you can use that would be better for fat people and people all around, right? But like you're not going to say that stuff because it's not what you want. You don't want like more elevator access. No, you want buildings to be bigger. You want doctors to stop talking about fat folk. You want doctors to stop talking about fatness. This is what you want. You don't want the practical things. You want the absurd things. People forget that what you like is often based on what you see. True. Uh, let me think about that for a second. Blind people? Which is why representation is so important. Representation could be very important. I just hope that you're doing it in the correct way. I hope depending on what you're doing and how you interpret uh you know like representation there are a lot of companies out there that for instance have a quota and they'll go we're gonna make this movie and then the the back company will be like hey um put a black guy in a main role like oh well a black guy what are you talking about like black guy like yeah put a black guy in a main role oh okay um and also make it a woman You're like oh it's fucking Ju we're, we're portraying julius caesar like i mean I, I are you sure you want a black woman as caesar and like that would be good that would be good great movie and then the, the movie bombs and then and then the company will go it's because you don't like women it's because you don't like women of color no it's just like a movie was shit like you know the movie was garbage you guys focus too much on identity politics and then at the, the the for the consequence of the movie being garbage so i just hope that the representation is organic and it's in a place of like uh it, it's in a place of like this is uh instead of like we force this person in here it's supposed to be like that if that makes any sense what we see is not a direct reflection of what is genuinely likable and attractive and good. I think these people, the way they think about stuff, and Splotch Baker is so, so in, in very, very beautiful when saying this. I understand what she's saying. Like, she's trying to be like, well, even though everybody thinks that, you know, women that are 5'5", five five, that are, you know, curvy and have great body structure and look pretty – uh, everybody likes those people. That doesn't necessarily mean that's the, you know, like it's not, it's not because you like them. Um, it's because society told you that you have to like them. Um, it's not, you know, when you saw that Lamborghini driving down a street and you thought, damn, that should look good. Oh my God, that should look so good. Right. Or that one time when you were at the glory hole and you saw the guy put his penis to the thing and you were like, that should look good in your mouth. It's not because you actually like that thing it's because society told you to like that thing i think there's probably some truth to that to one degree or another but i think it's 
fundamentally meaningless unless you're going to actually give some concrete examples on what you're talking about because there are some things that society tells you are good like for instance you know wearing a nice suit and tie and things such and so forth but deep down inside all i really want to dress up as is Django fett from star wars like that's all i want to dress up as, like all the time but you know what i'm saying like there are certain things that i would society tells me to wear and do and things like that and i disagree with but that's okay but overall i don't think that's true across the board it is a reflection of what the people in power want us to think is good and pure and attractive. I think it's probably okay though, right? Like it, the people in the, the people that run these establishments, companies, or um, for instance, the government even, there needs to be raw laws and regulations. Like it's probably not a good idea to have your entire population be so obese that they physically can't work anymore or like they're running up the taxpayer's bill because your country is subsidized via like – healthcare and like you know you're just milking the the healthcare system because you guys are consistently in and out of like you know the hospital and things like that there should probably be some laws and regulations like hey you can't work at this establishment if you weigh this much you can't do this job because you weigh too much or things like that there are rules and regulations like even here in america freedom of speech is amazing that doesn't necessarily mean that all speech is great right like if you scream fire in a fucking movie theater it's not good right uh you can't threaten people like there are rules to this shit you can do a lot but that doesn't necessarily mean what you're doing is good so um, there needs to be like systems in place that tell you, no, you can't do this. This is not good, you know? So, yeah. We soak up so much more from the world and our environment than we like to think. We are not immune to propaganda. People get high and mighty about things like disabilities and fatness, like they're somehow inherently bad and unattractive and it just uh, I would just need to know exactly what you're talking about. Most people would determine uh, disability as unattractive because most people don't want to be with somebody that's disabled, which is fine, by the way. Um, it, it, it just depends on, like, where you are in your life. And the same thing with fatness is, like, I'm not saying that people can't find these things attractive. But overall, people probably wouldn't. Like, it just depends also on the disabledness. Like, if somebody's missing an arm, I'm sure many people would be totally fine with somebody missing an arm. Um, mental disability, probably not. Like, most people don't want to be with somebody that is literally, like, you know, threatening to, you know uh kys themselves every single day or whatever like most people don't want to do that most people don't want to most people want to be with a stable person that's not gonna have to deal with many problems most people don't want to get, enter in a relationship with somebody that has issues consistently it's just it's just what it is you know it sucks if you're on the receiving end of that too by the way if you're like that person that is receive you know has all these problems and things like that it does suck but you can't blame the other person for that. Like, you can't be upset that the other person doesn't find that attractive if it's just not in their life path to date somebody like that. And the same thing could be said with somebody that's obese. Like, there's a lot of problems that come with dating somebody that's obese. Maybe you're somebody that's very active. Maybe you like walking. Maybe you're somebody that likes to get up early in the morning. Maybe you're, you want to be with somebody that you find physically attractive. And most people do not find being fat physically attractive. And I understand what you're saying. But, like, dude, these are real things that people feel. And you're just basically saying, well, the reason why you feel that is not because you feel that. It's because society told you. I can kind of see it a little bit, but dude, like, what, what, what even is the point of this? Like, are you just trying to dismiss the fact that you think that you're trying to dismiss that people have these feelings and that they should feel bad about that? Like, what am I supposed to do about this? Not good. Why do we think I disagree, by the way. I think that there's a, I think there's a lot society can tell you which is good and bad. Um, but I think when it comes to, like, sexual preferences and things like that, uh, I think most of the time it's, it's based off the individual. Like, maybe... Uh, you know, maybe you grew up in like a racist part of town. And you think that black ladies that ingest Vaseline is bad or whatever, and you don't like braids and stuff. Maybe like I could see that. Maybe like your parents or people told you that was bad, and I could see that. But I think most of the time, as we become more progressive as a society, you know, it's here in the West at least, um, we're we're like open. Like we're pretty open nowadays. That because that is the message that we've been shown. But because the message is so insidious and there from the beginning of our lives, we don't question it, we just absorb it. And when we just absorb something from the beginning of our lives, we think it's just common sense. So we don't interrogate it and we don't want to interrogate it. But these are messages that we are being fed. I would just need to know what the messages are. If the message is being fat is not healthy, if the message is losing an arm is not healthy, if the message is having mental illness is not healthy, then what do you want to do about that? Like you want people to see the other thing, the nuance in that, which is that it could be healthy depending on who you're talking about and what it is. Like most people already know this. Like 
we have we have a hierarchy based on things like if you're 20 or 30 pounds over most people don't care like that's whatever because most people can deduce that being 20 30 pounds over is not really a major health risk um but once you start getting two three four five hundred pounds over yeah dude it becomes an issue 100 pounds even is like a big problem 50 pounds over could be an issue um so most people see that and they go this is not good and the same thing for like disabilities most people don't care if somebody's in a wheelchair for the most part like there might be some issues there or somebody like they're not looking down upon i mean they might be physically looking down upon them but they're not actually looking down upon them like morally speaking or like people that wear glasses or people that have like um you know bpd or autism like most people are pretty knowledgeable about this stuff um but that doesn't necessarily mean that you're entitled to be dated because of that that's crazy like you're literally what you're advocating for is literally like forget about what society has told you because it's all wrong and i'm literally drawing this connection that society told us that we're wrong which may or may not be correct and forget about what you actually like um just date people because and you should feel bad if you don't. Like, that's terrible. There is no innate body hierarchy. No. <sighs> innate body hierarchy? You, in a society, people ought to be healthy, right? People ought to be, relatively speaking, generally speaking, healthy. Like, that means that able-bodied individuals should be working. Able-bodied individuals should be, you know, making a living and supporting family and friends and things such and so forth ought to be now there are exceptions to that naturally and that's okay because we can subsidize those individuals to the people that are working and it's not necessarily those people's fault if they are disabled which is fine i'm totally for the subsidization for people that can't right but what you're asking for is like what you're telling me basically is like we we should just ignore when there are problems with somebody's body because it's not fun it's not good to look at and it's mean that we're looking at those people as people that can't do certain things that's terrible like that's so gross like it doesn't make sense even generally no truth and this is attractive this isn't it is shaped by the media and our culture yeah this is a major cope this person is gone very far gone this person can't even think properly anymore and they're just like everything has to be external there's not even like there's never any incentive anymore to look inward and see if there's anything you can do about your problem it's always somebody else's problem fat is not a bad word <laughs> i call myself fat i'd also call myself a brunette neutral don't feel more negative about one than the other. <sighs> Honestly, the fact that you said f the bride is fat makes you just as bad as all those people commenting. So like, okay, just because you can have a word that you don't feel like is offensive doesn't mean the word isn't offensive, right? Like, let's say, for instance, a lot of black people say the N-word, right? And that's fine. A lot of people don't care that a lot of black people say the N-word. But if a white person said the N-word, then people would have a problem with it. So if a white person was saying, well, I think the N-word is fine. Like, I say the N-word and it's great. But does that really mean that it's great, though? Do you think that's okay? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, just because you think being called fat is fine uh, doesn't mean other people are going to. Now, granted, those people would be retarded, obviously. Um, it's fine if you want to call somebody whatever the fuck you want to call them. Um, you know, hey. You, 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 hopefully that other person on the receiving end of that whatever that comment is is an, enough of uh, enough of an adult to handle the fact that you may or may not have called them something disrespectful and they should have the ability to understand that words are words right and uh just because somebody called you the n-word or fat it shouldn't be that big of a deal like hopefully you're not gonna like lose your life or go to jail because somebody called you a name or didn't mean to call you a name or something you know it, it just depends Number one, as a fat person who calls themselves fat, literally as someone who has fat in my username. Just because you're fat doesn't mean that like the word itself doesn't have value, dude. That's so crazy to even say. If you think that that's offensive, then that's because you view being fat as negative. You <laughs> when, when people say the N word, okay? When, when black dudes say the N word, it's, it's okay, right? It's fine. But when another person says the N word, I disagree naturally, but you do understand. Like, that's how it works. You, I mean, this person is obviously dumb and whoever said this comment, but still. You being fat as having some stigma attached to it. I do not view being yeah, fat. Most of the, most of the way, most of the words that we use in today's world um, don't really have, like words themselves shouldn't really be deemed as offensive unless you're using them in an offensive way like they're mostly just n neutral um it, they're just descriptive terms for the most part but if you're using them in a context which is not which is obviously bad like then it's bit then it's obviously not good like if somebody were to say like oh wow um it's just gross you know it's just gross the way that 
things happen nowadays or if somebody said yeah it's just gross the way you acted like that's obviously a negative context there it was not a good example the way you say things is usually like how you say them is usually uh, de depending on how you say it, right? It's like if you were reading the N word out of a book, most people would be fine with that because it's like you're reading the book. But if you were to say the N word to another person, then naturally it's going to be different. That is a negative thing. I do not view the fact that I am fat as a failing or as a negative thing. I do. I say fat because it is much less patronizing than all the euphemisms that people use. You know, a larger lady, a fluffy lady, a curvy lady, like whatever those are patronizing. The fact that people are using euphemisms to avoid saying fat suggests that it is so terrible to be fat that they don't even want to say the word. You know, it's the Voldemort of body descriptors. I am there is a, there are there are a lot of fluff words that we use nowadays plus size uh fluffy like she just said like there are a lot of fluff words because most people don't want to be fat most people know that it's negative to be fat so they use extra descriptive words to like soften the blow almost to make it seem like whatever they are is not as bad as it actually is i am fat which is crazy by the way because like the words we use nowadays don't even have really value anymore that bride is fat not negative if you choose to add negatives to it then that is you that is your stigma that is your bias that is showing not mine all right, guys, that's the end of the video. I hope everybody enjoyed today's video. And if you did, I'd appreciate if everybody could leave a like, comment, subscribe, sharing the video, all those things I'd appreciate tremendously. So if you could do any of that stuff for me, I would appreciate you tremendously. Um, if you watch the video in its entirety and or you're here right now, leave it down below by typing in hair, H-A-I-R, because the hair upon your head is so lovely, delicious, amazing, spectacular, lubricated. Even if you don't have any hair, I still think that the head that you have is disgustingly beautiful. And we should display it upon everybody's wall, not like that, but like a picture. Like have a picture of your beautiful, amazingly terrific head because it's so amazing. It's so well shaped. It's so well amazingly sculpted. Whoever deity you pray to did a good job. They made you really, really good looking. You got the smell good items too. You smell really, really delicioso. I love the way your skin is textured. It's really, really good. You're just a good in general. But anyway. If you want to check out my social media, it'll be listed down below in the description. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys.